So I hope you feel like it would be handy to just kind of like go over this whole project and make sure you understand what goes in each spot. Okay, so imagine for a minute you interviewed your mom. I'm gonna be writing way too quick because if your project is as sloppy and, and short as mine is, it would probably be like a C minus. Okay, so just do a quality job when you do this. You can type it, it's much more professional, much easier to read. All right, what was one of their first loans? Let's say it was about uh, buying a house. I don't wanna write all of this out, I'm gonna abbreviate. How long did it take this to pay this off? Still paying or paid off uh, at this time or whatever. Was there one of their first investments? Well, maybe they bought some stocks or maybe they just uh, invested some in their 401k as a typical one. Uh, and are they still investing in it? Probably yes. Just give me more details than just this unless you want a super low grade to give me the absolute minimum, then I give you the minimum grade. What's the one thing they wish they would have done differently on the loan or the investment? Um, a typical thing that people will say is they wish they would have put in more uh, on the investment and maybe on the loan, maybe pay it off early. Although to be completely honest, I kind of wish I hadn't paid off my house. I wish I would have taken the money and slowly kept paying off my house, but take that money and instead invest it in something good instead of paying off my house. But it's been nice to have the house paid off, so I don't know, I could see the argument. What if I had invested it and then I invested it in something bad and then it went all the way to zero, which happens. Then my house still wouldn't be paid off and that would really suck. So it all depends, you know, it's kind of risky if you don't, uh, if you have the chance to pay off your house and you don't, and you instead invest it in something else, then you really depends if you happen to guess right and you buy a Tesla when it's brand new or something and you'd make, you know, 3,200%, awesome, but maybe it's more likely that you wouldn't guess the right one. All right, anyway, what advice do I have for you as you begin your investment future? This is just me talking. I encourage you to start early because if you try to invest and you only say, well, someday when I'm rich, I'll save some money, you might never be rich. And if you wait a long time, Exponential growth looks like this. Do you want to get to this part? It takes a long time. Okay, if you don't invest for a long time, you never get to that part. So everybody is young once. So everybody can invest when they're young. And if you do, you have long enough that it can grow and ride right up to the top and get a lot in your investments. So do it early. You don't have to put in all your money and have no fun, but just have some money that you put aside and you never touch. That'd be my advice to you. But I don't know what your interview person said to you. All right, next up, initial income and calculations. What's the job you're interested in? I keep using the example of nurse. Now this is the part where you can't just say that nurses make uh, you know 50,000 a year you have to provide a screenshot proof, and that's where you would screenshot that and drop it right in. So whatever this job is that you decide you're gonna be it doing, that, again, this isn't a promise, this is a, you can look into it and find out maybe you don't like this idea because you look up how much they make and you don't like it, or maybe this will be the job you someday get. But anyway, you gotta get proof of that salary, and if it isn't a starting salary, I'm gonna bust you for that. That's gonna be points off. Because a lot of people are like, well, I see this range of like 50,000 to 150,000, so I'm gonna pick something in the middle. That's not what happens with a starting salary. Your starting salary is the low one. And then it goes up from there. You know, you don't get to start making way more than, than an average person, okay? You don't even start at average. When you start your job, you make the lowest amount and then it goes up. So make sure you pick the smaller starting salary. Now, th what's different about these two is that it's per year and per month. So if this was 50,000 a year, I would just go 50,000 divided by 12, put in, take it from my calculator and put that right here. We want it monthly because here's the le next thing. Let's say, actually I should grab my calculator and do 50,000 divided by 12. Okay, so if it's 50,000 a month, then you make 4166 and 
It's 0.667. I am okay with you rounding to the nearest dollar on this whole thing. So if you want to just say it's 4167, that's fine with me. You don't have to go to the nearest penny. How'd I get that again? Divided by 12. 50,000 divided by 12. That's my monthly income. Every month you get four grand. That's pretty good. But you can only spend 15% of that on a car or a boat. Like you just can't afford to take all your money and put it towards a car because you have to eat and you have to live somewhere. And so 15%. To clarify, you multiply by 0.15. So I'm going to take my 4167 and I'm going to times by 0.15. This is the one that I get asked a lot. How'd you get this? I got it by doing 0.15 times my monthly amount. So now, what is the item that you're going to actually buy? So let's say I decide to buy a Mazda Miata because I always thought those were kind of cool. Okay, and I have to have a picture here where I got it off the internet. Because you can't just make up a number for a car. We want a real car. Okay, so you find one that's for sale somewhere, see what the price is. Now there's my, my thing I'm going to buy. As long as I can afford it. So in the middle of the project, sometimes kids have to go back and go, dang, that was too expensive. So I have a $20,000 Miata. What's its monthly payment? If you choose a loan, use interest of 5%. This is where you go into the TVM solver. Everybody, please, right now, right now, go into your TV, TVM solver and go to the end line. And Eddie, especially because you were absent, type in exactly what I show you. Do you see the end thing on the top of the TV, TVM solver? All right. So that's gonna be a, oh, by the way, also, this is a five-year loan. Everybody write that in. It's gonna be a five-year loan. Unless it's a house, in which case, if you really wanna investigate the house, you're doing a 30-year loan. But otherwise, almost all car loans or, or boat loans are five-year loans. Okay, so what I put for N, five times 12. You can just type in 60. But your calculator would have times it for you right there. Interest rate, you're going to use 5%. Why? Because I looked up interest rates recently, and it's about 5% for whether it's a car or a house or a boat. About 5% is about right. Does it matter on your credit? Totally. If you have bad credit because you haven't established any credit or you've had a bunch of bills you didn't pay, then they will charge you like twice that much interest. So just know that about your credit rating. It makes a big difference at the interest time. Okay, next thing. Everybody's got in a 60 and a five, right? Now a present value. This, they are giving you money. So that's positive. And they're going to give you all 20,000. Two zero, 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 20,000. This is called the present value. Alexis, could you shut that door for us, please? Thank you. After present value is payment, PMT. For now, just put a zero there. Just put a zero to hold the place for now. FV is future value. You want the future value of this to go down to zero. 20,000 needs to go down to zero because it's a loan and you're slowly paying off that loan. So you want the future value of it to be zero. Next is the P slash Y and the C slash Y. And those are both at 12 because it's monthly. All right, now you should have all those in on your screen. I know this is brand new for you. Have you got this one caught up? All right, so now this last part is kind of tricky. You go back and arrow up to where the payment is, and this will be like blinking, okay? That, that's the cursor, it's called. So you're on the payment, and then you do alpha, which is the green key near the top of the calculator, alpha, and then solve, A-L-P-H-A, and solve is way down on the bottom by the enter key. So it's kind of like upper left and lower right. You do alpha solve, and then Taylor, what did you get? I got negative 377. 377, is that correct? Okay, good. Other people got that? Okay, good. So then your payment is 377 a month. This is important. 
Is your payment less than your 15% of your salary? All right. The 15% of my salary is on the other page, but it was 625. So my salary, 15% was 625, so yes, this is okay. Do you get a lot of people right there? They're trying to be like a teacher and then trying to like buy a super expensive car and it won't work because your starting salary isn't high enough. So your 15% of your salary needs to be big enough to pay this. And is 625 enough to pay 377? Yep, it is. So we'd be okay buying that car. All right. If you take this loan, how much total would you spend? It's the payments, which are the 377 times, how many payments did we make? Lydia, how many payments did we make? 60. So everybody do 377 times 60. To get out of this, you wanna do second quit. They are basically the top two buttons the second key and then quit is right above mode. That gets you out of that TMZ solver thing, your TMV. And 377 times 60. 22620. All right, how much interest would it cost you to take out and pay back this loan? Well, the total it cost me was 22,000. How much is the interest? You just have to take away the 20000 because that wasn't interest. And you'll see that it's 2620 of it. Think of it this way. You thought you were going to pay 20000 for the car. You actually end up paying 22620 because of interest. Okay, moving on. So this is the part where you're going to choose to save up for it instead. We've already done the whole loan thing and we figured out whether we could afford it or not. And you make sure that you can afford it because if you screw that up, I have to take off a bunch of points for picking something that you can't afford. It's higher than your 15%. All right, so on this one, pay attention because a lot of people get it up to there, but then they get stuck right here. So what would be the payments for the item if you saved up for it? Use payments that are less than your 15% of your monthly salary and use interest rate of 7%. All right, so this is about investing, not borrowing. This is investing. So here, here goes. N equals, actually, we don't know. You might as well put a question mark right there because we don't know how many months it's going to take. That's the point. We'll use the calculator to figure that out. Then there's interest, and that's 7. You're getting 7%. It's like you invested in stocks, and you're getting 7%. Next is the present value. You start with no money, and you just are going to save up for this car. Now, the PMT. Is that next? Thank you. The payment is whatever you want, as long as it's less than your 625. So I personally am going to choose... 600 because it's a nice round number that's what I can afford. You know, like remember we said you could afford up to 15%. I can save 600. And the question's going to be how long will it take me to save it? This is another one that's weird. Future value. The future value. What is the th value of the thing I want? I want a $20,000 car. That's what I want the value to be in the future. Oh, wait, my payments are always negative, so my bad. Negative 600 right there. Okay, so everybody put this in, in the TMV solver, or TVM, sorry. TVM solver. If you, you know, when you put in a question mark like this, the calculator needs you to put in a zero to hold the place until you know what that is later. Interest rate was seven. Present value of the thing is zero because we have no money and we're saving for it. The payment is going to be, remember, that depends on you. I'm using 600 because that's what my nurse's salary said I could afford. And then I'm going to go to some 
stuck in a loop on my calculator here. Hold on. Future value I want to be 20,000. If you ever use the minus key for like 600, the, when I was putting it, I was using the minus key and it was like kicking me out every time. You got to use the negative key. All right, last but not least, I'm going to do the highlighter thing again. That spot there, you go to it and you go alpha solve. Atis, can you tell me what we get? 30. Actually, I got 30.5. Would you agree that it takes more than 30 months for me to get enough? So we better be more clear. 30.5, I know we said we could round, but if you're going to round that, you better say it's 31 months. See what I mean? Because it isn't just 30 months. And that'd be something I would nick you for if you said it only took me 30 months and I'd be like, mm, nope, we didn't quite have enough. You didn't have 20,000 at 30 months. Okay. So is this payment less than the 15% of your salary? Yes, yeah, 600 is less than 625, so yeah, it is. Next, how much would you a total spend? This is again one of those, a lot of people don't know how to do this. You do this, this times that. That's what happens is for 30 months, you'd put in payments of 600. And you might think it makes 20,000, it does not. You either make more or less. So I'm doing 600 times 30.5. How come I only had to put in 18,300? Thought I was saving 20 grand. How come this only comes at 18,3? Somebody, I know somebody knows this. How come I only had to put in 18,300, but now somehow magically I've got 20,000? Yes. Because, of interest. because I earned interest this time. Instead of paying somebody else, I got money. My 18,000 is all of a sudden worth 20. So I only put in 18. Now, how is that different than on the loan? On the loan, you paid more for the car. Here, I actually paid less for the car because I had some interest helping me along the way. Do you get the difference? So if that $20,000 car is either going to cost you like $23,000 if you have loans or less than $20,000 if you saved for it. All right. So how much is the total you actually spent that went here? eighteen three. How much less did it cost to buy your item this way? Well, $18,300 minus... Can somebody remind me what it was? Twenty two. It's easier for you to flip back a page than me because I'm recording. Kennedy, can you flip back a page and tell me how much it cost to get the car with the interest? 22,000 something? Or did you not write it down? I did not write it down. Okay, did somebody write it down? All right, that's a little sad. Okay, I'm going to make up a number because weirdly if I flip back two slides, It'll screw up the recording and, and people won't, it'll be all jumbled. So I'm going to act like it was 22,500 and I subtract these two numbers and I'd have 18,300 minus 22,500 and I get $4,200 difference. What's that the difference between? This be difference between saving or taking a loan. That's four grand. That's a lot of money. Reflection section. What are the advantages and disadvantages? This part you're going to have to do yourself. Just tell me what are the advantages of the loan? What's the disadvantages of the loan? There are good things about a loan and there's bad things about a loan. There's good things about saving. And there's bad things about saving money. Summarize what you learned and that's the project.
Now you have today in class to finish this. Tomorrow, during class, you'll be able to touch it up so that by the end of the hour, I'm hoping a lot of you are done by the beginning of the hour because I want to be grading projects in class and getting your scores. These are counting as a test. This is a pretty easy test because I just went over the whole thing. But then again, I always go over all the questions that are going to be on a test too, right? But now you have to be able to do it yourself. And from here, it's on you, okay? You can come up and ask me for like help, but I'm not going to do your project for you, okay? You cannot use, of course, the same exact car or the same exact amounts that I made up. You can't use 50000 for your person and you can't use 20000 for the car. You uh, have to use your own numbers. And then I'll grade it and pop it in the grade book, hopefully tomorrow. Uh, and then Friday, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Tomorrow is Wednesday, right? Yeah, tomorrow is a work day on the project and I'm hoping you're done by either early or the end of the hour tomorrow. And Thursday, I'll probably still be grading projects. Friday, we'll start something completely new. Okay, that's all I have for the video for today.